So if you've been watching my YouTube channel for any length of time, you know I enjoy a good cup of coffee in the woods. You'll also know that I've said on more than one occasion that my favorite way of making coffee is with the AeroPress. Well, the AeroPress is not the only way to make a good cup of coffee while you're out in the woods or at home. Another way is with a thing called a mocha pot. So when EndCamp, the makers of the EndCamp wood stove that I recently tested, offered to send me their new cafe, I readily accept it. If you're interested in hearing more about the cafe, stay tuned. Okay, so what I thought I would do is give you an overview of the EndCamp mocha pot, but I've also wanted to show you a couple of other mocha pots that are designed for use at home. And that's the reason why I'm doing this at home in my kitchen is, primarily I see this as a home use device as well as a car camping device, although it is designed for backpacking. But we'll talk more about that as we get into the video. Okay, what I thought I would do is give you an overview of the EndCamp Cafe, and then we'll get to make some, making some coffee with it. All right, so the EndCamp Cafe, as it comes, has its own included coffee cup, stainless steel, with a silicone wrap around the outside of it for comfort from the hot liquids inside. The design and construction of the actual coffee maker itself is very similar to all mocha pots. They all work basically the same way, and I'll break that down in a minute. So these are referred to as a mocha pot, although oftentimes they are referred to as stovetop espresso makers as well. In fact, they're not a true espresso maker, as espresso is made with steam under pressure being forced through the coffee. And while that's true of a mocha pot in that the water in the bottom is turned to steam and forced up through the coffee and the filter I'll show you in a second, under some pressure it doesn't come up to the same pressure levels as an espresso maker does. So it's not a true espresso, but I will tell you it'll make a strong rich cup of coffee that is very close to espresso in nature. Alright, so let's break this device down. What you have is a water container on the bottom or a water reservoir on the bottom and this is where the water will go and I'm going to point out now but I'm going to be showing you again in a few minutes time. I don't think you'll be able to see it on the inside. This little knob right on the side and this will appear on all the espresso maker or all uh, mocha pots is a pressure relief valve and that's critical to the operation of this. It is your safety so that there is no damage and no harm caused if you if it went into overpressure for any reason. The next thing you have is what looks like a funnel but in fact this is the thing that holds the coffee and where the steam is forced up through the bottom through the filter through the coffee and into the upper chamber. So very basically you would put water in here and again I'll show you this in a moment but I just want to point out as a safety measure when you're putting water in this you want it to be just below the pressure relief valve and you'll be able to see that inside when you pour water in so just below the pressure relief valve. You don't want to obstruct the pressure relief valve in any way. And then you would fill the funnel up with coffee drop it inside make sure the rim is clear as you'll see in a minute why and then you're going to put the top on now the top as you can see has a silicone or rubber depending on what model you have ring around here and that's a seal that seals the two units together and keeps the pressure inside so once we put that on top attach the two down and we do so with hand tightness that you don't have to really come onto it but you do want it to be snug so that there is no escape of steam between the two devices. Okay. Now the end cap is nice in that it has the folding butterflies handles which do have a little bit of silicone on the outside. That does two things for you. One it allows for a nice compact package which the mug will slide down over but it also should allow for the protection from the heat as well when you have this either over an alcohol stove as I'm going to do today or over the burner on your stove or over a fire as this is intended to be used as well. So as the heat from the and the hot water is turned into steam and is forced up through the coffee there is a spout inside you can see this and you'll actually see it in operation in a minute and on either side of that spout there are two little jets and the coffee will come out slowly into the reservoir on top and once it is finished you're ready to go. Okay let's have a size comparison at the same time. First off, the weight for the end camp unit all assembled is one pound seven ounces and one pound one ounce without the cup attached. And I'll, sh I'll tell you the reason I point that out for a minute and of course I mean, I'm going to put all that information in the show notes below. Here's a size comparison. 
a 40 ounce clean canteen. This is the narrow mouth model, but the 40 ounce clean canteen, roughly the same size. In fact, the clean canteen is a little wider than the coffee maker is. So that should give you an idea of just how big the coffee maker is. Also, I wanted to show you a couple of other items that are of similar nature. This is a Bialate brand name, stainless steel mocha pot used intended for stove top use. Uh, it is stainless steel and I'll tell you it is considerably heavier than the end cap is. And I chose this to show you because it is the same size in terms of the amount of coffee that it will make. The, the reservoir, excuse me, the funnel will hold exactly the same amount of coffee. But there are one you're probably more familiar if you see these anywhere are ones like this. These are made from cast aluminum and this again is about the same size in terms of the amount of coffee it'll make. Actually this is just a little bit bigger but again there's, that's another type you have. Now the disadvantage of taking one of these in the woods of course is the handle as well as the compactness. So if uh, you're looking for a compact lighter weight and that's what's interesting. Even though the end cap is made of stainless steel it is in fact lighter than this aluminum one or, or of course the other stainless steel one is much heavier again. So this is a reasonably lightweight for what it is stainless steel if, you, if that's important to you coffee maker that you can take in the woods but at one pound seven ounces it is a fair amount of weight so it, again as I mentioned before it's something I'm more likely to use car camping or for short trips into the woods. All right let's set up and make some coffee. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to show you how the NCAP, NCAP Cafe is designed to work with the NCAP wood burning stove. So here's the wood burning stove that I tested in previous videos and you can see how it sits on top. Now what's interesting about the design is this is a rather tall narrow cafe or mocha pot style coffee maker but it should work well in conjunction with the end camp stove because it's not so wide that it totally blocks airflow coming out from underneath it. Now you can see that I have not used it with the end camp stove because that's not how I intend to use this when I use the coffee maker but it is designed to work that way and if you want to use those two in conjunction it should work out quite well. Okay let me put this down here put the end camp stove out of the way so what I am going to be using today is my Trangia, well my Trangia knockoff by Alex burner in set inside of my Nano and the reason I'm using that is I could have easily used it on top of the stove. I could also have used it with an isobutane or propane gas stove as well but I wanted to use it with the alcohol stove because likely this is how I'm going to be using it most often when I do use this out in the, out in the woods. So we're going to use it on top of this. Now one thing I will tell you is you want to use a medium to low medium heat when you're using it. An alcohol stove does not produce anywhere near the heat that an isobutane stove produces. So if you are using an isobutane or a gas stove of some type, turn the heat down and go with the lowest heat that is necessary to make the device work. That may take a little experimentation, but it's better off to start low and work your way up through the heat rather than make it too hot. Because if you heat it too fast, it'll create too much pressure, it'll get bitter, and it won't create a good cup of coffee. So it does take a little longer this way, but this is the way you make a better cup of coffee. So I'm going to ignite the Trangia put it to the back just for a moment as it comes to a bloom and we'll get the coffee maker ready. Okay I've already taken the funnel out because what I wanted to show you now is putting some water inside of this. So this is not a necessary step. It does help make a better cup of coffee. It does shorten the time down a little bit but it is a little added complexity and that is preheat the water that you're going to be using in the, the mocha pot and you do that off to the side. I'm just pouring some water in. I need to be able to see where the water is going. You bring water just up to the bottom of that pressure relief valve and I think that's showing up in camera and you should be able to see that the water is just touching the bottom of that. No higher than that. And that's the correct amount of water and it's measured so that it works with the correct amount of coffee which you'll see in the filter in a minute. Now I'm using hot water so this is going to get a little warm to attach the top onto it. Having hot water means that the water isn't heated or the coffee inside of the funnel isn't heated along with the, uh, the water as it heats up so it doesn't get bitter or as you know it has less of a chance of getting bitter. So I'm going to put my filter in and now I'm going to put some coffee in that. 
So the coffee that I'm using, and I'll, I'll tell you where it came from in a minute, but the grind is, uh, how should we say, a little finer than you would use in your drip coffee maker at home, a little or much finer than you would use either for cowboy coffee or for a French press, but not as fine as you would use in an espresso maker. You don't want it that fine because it makes it very difficult for the hot water to, or the steam at that point to get up through. So you don't want it quite that fine. Now, you're also not going to fill this so much that it fills up that you have to tamp it down or push it down to get inside. Just level with the top, and that's fine. So I'm just going to make sure that is hot, isn't it? I'm going to make sure that's clean all around the top. This is critical to make a good seal with the top portion of the coffee maker. You want to make sure that is clean. All right, the coffee we are using today, actually I'll show you that in a minute after I get this assembled. Like I said, the bottom of that is hot. I'm using a glove, but you could just as easily have used a bandana or something from your pocket. Hold the bottom, screw the top on. Tight, but not so tight that you won't be able to get it apart. Just tight enough so that there is no pressure leak. All right, let me bring the Trangia back into focus here. I'll put the coffee on pot on top. I'm going to give you some close-ups of it as it comes to uh, a boil in a second, but uh, just as that does, let me show you this. This is coffee that was brought to me or sent to me by one of my viewers, Dennis Nettles, and this is coffee from the Canteen Cup and from Bethlehem, Georgia. And what he sent me was the Three Farmers Blend, and it's quite a nice, dark, rich roast. So, Dennis, just a shout out. Thank you very much for that coffee. And for anybody who's interested, I'll put the links to the Canteen Cup coffee makers in the show notes below as well. So, again, thank you, Dennis. That's what I'm going to be enjoying today. That's the end of it. This is all I have left. It's just what I ground up for this, uh, for this demonstration. So, I've enjoyed it very much. Okay, I'm going to have to reset the camera so that you can see the coffee being made and we'll come back then. Okay, I couldn't talk. I didn't think you would hear me while the coffee was brewing. That came to uh, brew much quicker than I had expected, so I, I didn't catch it just as it started. But what I wanted to say at this point is that if you want the best cup of coffee, is it's very critical that you time it so that just as the, the coffee is at an end coming out through the spout, that you take it off the heat, that you don't leave it on the heat, and ideally, I would now set this in, either on something cold, like a cold band, uh, washcloth in the snow would be ideal or even in a little bit of water just to cool down the lower temp the lower half the reservoir so it doesn't continue to produce steam which will rise through the coffee and cause more of a bitter brew all right so here is the finished product and we're going to pour that into a glass to show you what it looks like put the lid down glass back here Got a rather tall glass I'm using for this. It's the first one I could find, I guess. And you can see that's one hot cup of coffee. Now, filled up to the bottom of the pressure relief valve, and with the set that amount of coffee, you should get about 12 ounces when you're finished. Now, remember, this is a strong cup of coffee, so that's a good, strong cup of coffee. It looks a little dark because it is quite dark 
And if you don't like it quite that dark and quite that strong, then by all means, add a little bit of hot water to it to dilute it just a bit. Or if you like it that way, it's fine. It is very hot right now. You may want to wait a few minutes before you, before you drink it. Or you can add your cream and sugar and whatever else is. I like mine black, so that's the way I'm going to have it. You don't have to use a dark roast coffee. A dark roast coffee is what's traditionally used in espresso makers. It is what I use today, but you can use any coffee you want, just a matter of getting the right grind. In fact, I would encourage you to try different types of coffee to see what it is you like best. All right, I'm going to let that cool off a little bit and enjoy a bit of that, and we'll wrap this video up. Wow, yeah, that's a good cup of coffee, all right. combination of the end camp cafe mocha pot espresso style coffee maker as they're often also referred to along with the coffee that Dennis Nettles had set me that made a really nice strong cup of coffee all right let me put that aside okay the end camp cafe a good coffee maker, nice lightweight, especially for stainless steel, like I said, lighter than aluminum versions of a similar volume. Compact with the folding butterfly handles, comes with its own mug included, or if you want to use a different mug, there's no reason why you can't do that. A couple of things, after I finish making coffee, this does remain hot for quite a long time. That's true of stainless steel, aluminum a little quicker to rele release its heat, but there is still a little bit of hot water left in the bottom of the coffee maker. So be conscious of that when you do take this apart. It can be a little tricky to get the funnel out while it's hot, so you may as well let the whole thing cool off. Also very important is that you clean this well. You might want to use soap and water, but make sure any soap is well rinsed out of it so it doesn't affect the flavor of any future cup of coffee. But if you leave residue behind from a cup of coffee, it is going to add a bitter taste to a future cup. The one last thing I would say about using the device is that when you are all finished and you go to put it away, make sure it's just a little loose. Don't want the thing so tight that it's going to leave an imprint in that silicone or rubber seal that's around the bottom. Just a little bit loose. Not so loose that it flops around, but not so tight that it's starting to press up into the rubber itself. Okay, I want to thank Encamp for sending this device out to me for testing and review, it does make a good cup of coffee. You may have noticed, if you've used mocha pots before, you may have noticed that when the coffee comes out of the spout inside of the chamber, it's coming out, it appears to be coming out in quite a bit of force. I wasn't used to that, I was used to it coming out more of in a flow, and then at the end of its cycle, it would start to spurt and sputter, and I knew that's when it was time to take it off. I did speak with the people at NCAMP and the engineers, and they said, no, that's normal for the operation of this one, it's just a little different than a lot of the other mocha pot designs, but it should no, in no way affect the flavor of the coffee. It does make it a little challenging recognizing exactly when to take it off the heat, so it's a bit of a judgment call on your part. But they were right, it hasn't made any difference in the taste that I can tell from the other devices using the same coffee, the same amount of water, and the same type of, uh, of uh, device, of course. All right, as I said, I will put some notes in the show notes below where you can get this device as well as where you can get that coffee that my friend Dennis Nettleson sent me. But until next time, get out and explore. Take that path left traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now. Oh, where's my coffee? Gotta have my coffee.